Hey, good morning, everyone. And happy Sunday. Glad you're here. We are going to get started. So if you want to find your seat, uh, we've got a pretty full house today. So when we do this, if you are in a pew that's got some extra space, let's say in the middle, if you're kind of on the outside, if you're able to scoot in just a little bit towards the center, uh, make some room for the people who are coming in late or the folks who are in the back, we would really appreciate that. I don't see anyone moving, but I trust you'll do that once I start. I believe in you. We are the body of Christ, and there's room for everyone. Well, welcome. We are glad you're here. Uh, this is Palm Sunday, and we have a truly fantastic service and morning plan for you. How many of you are, let's just say, if you're comfortable, if you just want to raise your hand a little bit, are you a visitor here today? Someone's invited you. You're here to see the kids play. You're a relative. You're an aunt. You're a grandparent. You're here just a little bit. You can do that. Well, welcome. We're very glad you're here. Um, you know, we hope you have a church home uh, of your own somewhere that's missing you today. But if not, uh, we hope you'll consider us. And uh, we want to uh, we want to welcome you uh, into the body and uh, make sure you feel at home here. So we're going to go through some quick announcements uh, because we do have a nice full service. Um, our altar flowers today are donated in loving memory of Sue Holtzinger from Nancy Jark. So Nancy, thank you for that. Uh, and we will uh, remember Sue uh, this day. Today is the first day of Holy Week. It's Palm Sunday. Uh, this is, uh, these are our high holy days. So we're, um, we're looking forward to, uh, to drawing closer to the Lord, to having an understanding of what happened uh, leading up to the events uh, that, uh, that really come together with the miraculous resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus on Easter Sunday. Uh, so we're excited that you're here. Um, after the service today, when everything's concluded, we do have a pancake brunch uh, that'll be happening in the building right behind us. Uh, everyone is welcome to stay for that. This is a free event. Uh, if you're uh, interested and able to give a donation to help offset the cost, we will certainly welcome that. Uh, but everyone's welcome, uh, whether or not you are, uh, you're, you're able or prepared to do that. Uh, we would love to have you stay, enjoy some delicious pancakes. And, uh, and some good fellowship. You can talk with uh, your loved ones. You can talk with someone new. Or you can sit in the corner by yourself and not talk to anyone. I won't judge you. <laughs> I won't judge you. I understand. It's Sunday. We're tired sometimes, and you just want to eat your pancakes in peace. That's okay. That is okay. But if you'd like to say good morning, reach out to someone, we would love for you to have that opportunity as well. Uh, and we hope that you can come back next Sunday uh, for our Easter services. Uh, after there are, we've got uh, three services on Easter Sunday. There's a sunrise service at 7 a.m., um, which is always delightful. A uh, sunrise service is great. Definitely worth getting up a little bit early for that. Uh, we'll have our normal 9 o'clock traditional service and then a 10.30 uh, more modern service after that. And after that 10.30 service, there is an Easter egg hunt uh, for kids. Um, it does not say necessarily how old those kids have to be, so if you are a boundary pusher, go for it. Uh, we won't judge you there either, um, but you just need to remember to bring your baskets, and uh, we'll hunt some Easter eggs, uh, because nothing says thank you, Jesus, like plastic eggs, right? Um, no, I'm kidding. I, I'm, I'm kidding. It's, um, it, it is a wonderful tradition and will be, uh, will be a delightful time. Prior to Easter, though, uh, there, are, there are two services that we'll have uh, prior to Easter Sunday. Uh, that'll be on Monday, Thursday. Uh, that uh, service will happen here. It doesn't say what time in my announcement sheet, but I am absolutely certain uh, you've got that listed in your bulletin there. Uh, the time, but and it's on the screen. Thank you, Jenner. It's always, so that's going to be at 6:30. It is going to be a musical service. We will have communion that night. Um, it, if you've not been to uh, our Monday Thursday service or anyone before, um, it really is. It is a, a celebration uh, and kind of a commemoration of the Last Supper, uh, and it is it is a wonderful time of reflection. Uh, this will be a, a, a great service to uh, lift your voice in praise, lift your voice in reflection. 
uh, and kind of prepare uh, your mind, uh, your heart, your attention uh, for the uh, for the other services that will come. Uh, Good Friday, uh, we will have a service uh, on Good Friday also at 6.30, um, and it's, uh, that's going to be a, a wonderful service as well. After Easter, after Holy Week, and after all the great things, one of the things that we have in the life of this church is we are sending a group of people to Guatemala on a mission trip that is uh, going to, they're going to leave on April 12th. And uh, as always, we uh, not only do they bring what they need for the trip, but they're also bringing suitcases of supplies and donations to leave at the medical clinic that is there. Um, in today's bulletin, there's an updated list of everything that clinic needs. Uh, there are a variety of things that we take for granted here that we have um, very easy, almost 24-hour access to that just barely exist in Guatemala. So we'd like to share what we have with those folks there. Um, if you would like to donate, or if that's something the Lord has placed in your heart, you're able to, please have those items in uh, by April 7th, because that's the time when we're going to be gathering all those up and, and, um, and be ready to go. Um, beyond uh, Easter and uh, Guatemala, there's lots of things going on in the life of the church. Uh, you can check the church app, uh, which is avail available at the Google Store uh, or the, the, the Google Play Store on your phone. Uh, there's back of the ministry table in the back of the sanctuary here. But we've got Vacation Bible School coming up in June. Um, uh, the theme this year is scuba, diving into friendship with God. You can check, uh, uh, check uh, the bulletin for more, more information about that. Also in April, there's a women's retreat at Redwood Christian Park. Uh, it'll be fantastic. We've got a Modesto Nuts game that we're going to be going to as a group. Uh, and there's a women's tea uh, as well. Lots of things going on, going on uh, in the life of Centenary. Uh, and we invite you not just to participate, but to uh, participate uh, in ministry with us. Uh, God calls us here uh, to minister to one another, uh, not just to our, uh, our physical and our spiritual needs, but to emotional needs as well. Uh, talk to someone who's lonely. Make sure everyone feels welcome. Uh, give if someone is in need. Uh, God provides for us, and we in turn do the same. Uh, one of the ways to do that is uh, we, we collect an offering every week. There are multiple ways that you can give, but all the monies uh, collected here uh, either go towards uh, just continuing the ministries that we have, keeping the lights on, uh, but also uh, things like Guatemala and uh, other, local, uh, other local ministries. Uh, if you'd like to give, you can give. There are giving boxes in the back. You can give there. You can also give online or uh, on a weekly basis through the church app. With that said... I want to invite everyone, it is a busy day, to just take a deep breath. There's a lot of activity. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, these kids, your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, nephews, they worked really hard for several weeks. And, uh, and we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to minister to you now uh, through, uh, through the story of Easter. So we've taken a deep breath. We remember where we are in the Lord's house, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, uh, that we can grow closer to you through learning, through singing, through music, uh, through fellowship. I ask that you would uh, speak to us the truth, uh, give to us your grace, so that we may share both with the people around us. Uh, we praise you for your mercy, for your grace. Uh, we praise you for all that you went through, uh, to buy our salvation. Lord, we thank you for this day and thank you for your presence in our lives as we go forward to this week. Amen. We are excited for the children's Easter play. If you came early, you saw us practicing a little bit more. There are 21 kiddos, including kiddos and the youth. So I'm so excited. In 21, awesome to be in the play. Let's hear it for 21 of these amazing. And we had very few practices, like three, like three. So I am proud of these kids for stepping up. Our lives have been a little bit crazy. Our practices were the Sundays after church, and that's pretty much what it was. The title of the play is, Oh, Come to the Altar. I tell you that 
So you're listening for why that is the title of the play. If you've been part of the Wednesday night Lent study or reading the Lent devotional daily through Lent, you're going to hear some things that might um, connect with that. We thought, what better way to have the kids tell a story around the theme of being altered, which is what we did for Lent. So we are going to get started right now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Palm Sunday, the first, the first Holy Week in the last Sunday before Easter. I love that Holy Week begins with a parade of palms. Why? Hello, Palm Sunday is a significant moment in the history of our faith. I guess you are right. Jesus, yeah. I guess you are right. Today does remind us that Jesus' entrance was a humble one. I guess you're right. Today does remind us that Jesus' entrance was a humble one. No horses or soldiers in their finest armor, just Jesus on a donkey. Who would have thought that a donkey would ever be part of an important story? Oh, girl, it even goes beyond the donkey. The palm, the palm branches represent the people's joyful hopes that, like Moses, Jesus lead, Jesus, Jesus would lead a new exodus. Oh. oh. Okay. Jesus will lead a new exodus. <laughs> oh, that's why people were shouting Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. And oh, did those people need saved? Those people. It's us people today who need to be saved. Look, here comes the poem now. so glad we know the end, the end of the story, but the people that day sure didn't. Right? All waving palms one day, then just a few days later, the joyful cries of Hosanna would turn into angry cries of crucify him. Holy week sure wasn't an easy week for Jesus. Exactly. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem marked the beginning of the final leg, the beginning, the beginning of the final leg that Jesus when Jesus went to the cross. When we think of the Palm Sunday procession, we may envision something big and magnificent. But, but it's, but it's actually, I, but it's actually the beginning of the price Jesus was willing to pay for our sins.
What do you think of my new Easter dress? I love it, but don't you think you need to have it altered? Altered into what? You don't know what alter means? What does that alter have to do with this dress? Who is your teacher anyway? Alter is when you have changes made called alterations to clothing so it fits. Then what is that alter? A place where we can get adjusted? Actually, that's a really good way to look at it. Now Webster's Dictionary will call an alter a structure like a table-like structure used in worship. But it is more than a structure. Altars are symbolic throughout the Bible. So both altars, this altar, nope. So we alter clothing A-L-T-E-R, clothing, t to make adjustments so it fits. And we go to the altar, A-L-T-A-R, to ask God to adjust us? Yes. In the A-L-T-A-R, altar has history. In the Old Testament, God's people will altars to create a space where they could encounter God and surrender offerings to him in obedience. In the New Testament, Jesus became that surrendered offering, and through him, we can have the power and presence of the Lord in a new way. So both altars, this altar and that altar, represent change. And I thought the English language was hard. Bam, there it is.
Hey, do you want to build a fire? There you go, acting like a boy scout already. Well, I am getting pretty close, and I do know a few things. All right, let's do it. And I'm sure you'll try and teach me something. Since you asked, have a seat and listen. Lesson one. Never try to burn a large piece of firewood directly. You'll likely just scorch it and fail. Lesson two. You make a small pile of tinder to use as a fire starter. Lesson three. Use, fi use, fi use waterproof matches or a lighter to ignite the fire and blow gently. Lesson four, as the fire burns, slowly add more kindling and firewood to the fire. And I know what lesson five is, the fire needs oxygen to keep burning. Yep, you can never leave it unattended. That's like the Old Testament when God's people brought offering. The priest couldn't just sit on the altar and walk away. He had to fan the flames and remain alert to encounter the presence of God. Being a follower of Jesus is the same. We have to fan the flames of our spiritual lives. In the New Testament, Paul warns believers to not quench the spirit. That's like throwing dirt or, or water over the fire in our lives, which is the Holy Spirit. We need to keep the fire in our lives burning by fanning each and every day. We are the altar. It's up to us to fuel our fire by reading God's word, keeping the heat with prayers, and fanning the flames by acknowledging what Jesus did for us on the cross. I'm so glad God sent Jesus into the world so we don't have to bring burnt offerings to the altar. Easter is a reminder of what Jesus did on the cross and the celebration of his resurrection. I'm going to keep fanning the flames of the Holy Spirit. Me too.
let's get back to the whole idea of the act of surrender. Is it like throwing in the towel, giving up, raising the white flag? That depends on what you are surrendering. If you are giving up on the hope that only Jesus can give, then you are way off base, buddy. However, if you are throwing in the towel and raising the white flag on your failures, disappointments, and pain to lay them at the foot of the cross, then bam, you are on the right track of what to surrender. That makes being a quitter pretty cool if you think about it. Rather than holding on to those things that keep our eyes off of Jesus, we can quit worrying about them and just surrender them to Jesus. Bam! Drop the mic. Well, I mean, pass me the mic, please. All this talk about being altered during the Lent season means we want to be changed and made new in the image of Christ. Quitting on our old self isn't a bad idea, y'all. Our new life in Christ through the death and resurrection of Jesus is how we become altered and the altar here on earth today. It's like the scripture that reads, new wine calls for fresh wineskins. Speaking of fresh, did you put on deodorant this morning? Okay, guys, let's get back on track from what Paul preached from Ephesians. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of powers in the unseen world. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. We all used to live that way, following our passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By that very nature, we are subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. And here comes the but. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life by raising Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that we have been saved. Let's follow that big butt. (laughs) With the so now, we find in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. So now there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because we belong to him, The power of the life-giving spirit has freed us from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses cannot save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his his own son in a body like we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Let's wrap up this scene with a highlight of real from Galatians 2.20. It is, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Talk about a mic drop moment.
In the midst of a world filled with chaos and disappointment, pain and death, there is a promise of restoration and transformation. It isn't found at the end of our lives, but at the end of ourselves. This is found when we embrace surrender. Altars have always represented change. Favorite places where sacred space meets our surrender lead to, uh, into authentic spiritual transformation. Every year we celebrate. A, a day of great joy. S, someone loves us very much. T, that death could not even, that even death could not destroy. 
E, everlasting hope now exists for everyone. R, reminding us on Easter of what Christ, what, of just what Christ has done. Happy Easter. We hope you heard our message. Boy, lots of thankfulness. Thankfulness to the kids one more time. How about that? And even as the worship team moves across here, thank them as well, because there was a lot of work there. And, of course, my wife, Gina. I was just thinking some of those kids we've been working with and spending time with for probably the last eight years, right? I mean, they, they started doing these plays when they were really small, and now they're starting to look at us eye to eye. So it's amazing how much they have grown and how much they have matured. Some of these lines, do you notice that year after year, they get more and more difficult? The lines and stuff they have to memorize are getting more and more challenging. But what they are doing is telling a story that is so important. And I think that for us as the church, we have lots to learn from that. Because one of the things that they're teaching us is how important it is to have this story embedded in you. You need this story deep down in your heart, mind, and soul so that when you're out there, no matter where you're coming and going, God can use you and God will bring Scripture back to you. These kids have memorized this stuff and where they'll use it in the future, who knows? But what I do know is God always, always uses that that we memorize and that that we put deep down in our hearts. So I hope that you walk away today with more than... Uh, just this was another activity we needed to go and watch our kids at. But this was them expressing their love for God. You all did such an amazing job. And I know that some of those lines were a lot to memorize. They were getting longer and longer. I'm like, Gina, that's a long piece for them to memorize. But they are doing so good. And I am so appreciative of that as well because I know that as pastor here, telling the story, they told it from Palm Sunday. You caught that, right? The palms coming in, Palm Sunday, and they took us all the way to the cross. And the imagery that they played in there for us is reminding us of this sermon that we've, series we've been in. So remember, where did we start? Valentine's Day. How many of you all remember Valentine's Day? We started here with ashes. We started there at Valentine's Day. How long ago was that? Doesn't that seem like forever ago? We started with ashes, and that's where we started to have a conversation, a real deep conversation about creating space. My prayer is that you've done some of that. We talked about creating and surrendering space for God. How much space do you have in your life right now for God? Or is it just to the next thing? What we've seen is, and what we're beginning to experience is how do we create space when we have so much going on in our lives? And then we talked about commitment, committing to God each and every day, not just on Sunday. Like, I am so thankful you're all committed to your kids and showed up here today to cheer them on and, and to encourage them. But what is your commitment to God each and every day? That's where this journey begins, your commitment to God when you wake up. And then it is putting God first, we learned, in everything. Not the old adage that God first, family second, job third. God in everything. God first in my life. God first in my family. God first in my work. It is God deeply penetrating every aspect of your life. And then we learned about thankfulness. Where does thankfulness come from? Thankfulness comes from Moments like this, when we are thanking God for our children, thanking God for Scripture, thank, it comes through thankfulness. It comes, thankfulness comes through praising God. And so if you haven't praised God today, how about one more time for God? Yes. Part of being the church is coming alive in moments like that and praising God for what God is doing. This has been an incredible moment in time. But the question I ask you here today, is it just a moment in time? Or will you be altered? Will you be altered? Not the, not the dress that Amalia was wearing, altar, but they played a very good, reminding us about the altar that alters our life, where Jesus Christ works in and through our lives. Peace comes because of the cross. 
Peace comes from the cross. So we are headed to Easter, and, and David, he told us a lot of things that are going on in the life of the church, and I know the pancakes are warming up over there, and everybody's thinking about pancakes and everything that goes with just having fun as family together, and so I do want to encourage you in that. But I know that if there's a couple pancake flippers here that are worried because they're like, uh, do I need to warm my griddle up? Am I supposed to go now? Take a deep breath because everybody here will wait on pancakes, right? Is anybody in a real big hurry? We will wait till the griddles get warmed and they'll be ready to go. So take a deep breath because what I want you to do is, you, is stay focused here with me just a minute, okay? I've just got a couple more minutes. Stay really focused in this moment because here's what we're doing. We are at Palm Sunday, and we are headed to the cross and Easter, okay? David told us about how we're going to have three services on Easter. It's going to be an incredible morning of saying, He is risen, He is risen indeed. 7, 9, and 10.30. Be, make a commitment to one of those services. David also told us about Thursday and Friday. Those are moments that will interrupt your week, right? You've got work. You've got things to do. You've got a schedule for the week. This is going to interrupt your week. And so that tells us and helps us to understand about how we are to be committed to God, even when there are busy things. I challenge anybody here in, in the office to, or in this place to go to the office next week and say, hey, do you know what's happening on Thursday and Friday? And encourage them encourage them to come. It is going to be a musical extravaganza on Thursday. It is just music like you can't even imagine. And so much work has been laid into that to tell the story of Jesus through music. And so I want to encourage you there. But Friday, Friday, Pastor Bob will be here bringing us a message about the importance of what that Friday, we call it Good Friday, but the reality is it is Holy Friday. It is Holy and Sacred Friday. It stands in our lives as one of the most monumental moments in a Christian Christians walk with Christ. Where are we at now? Everybody remember what today is? What is today? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. So I don't want us to hurry. I want us, as the song says, to tarry just a bit and to hear Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it. Fulfilling the prophecies that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about the miraculous signs. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There is nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. Those were the words on Palm Sunday. We are headed to Easter when we know that Jesus went to that cross alone and abandoned. Where did the crowds go? Where did these people go? Where are the ones that saw, had heard about the miraculous signs and wonders? So I'm asking you today, as you sit here, for those that might be watching online, I'm asking everybody, Will you be there on Sunday to say he is risen, he is risen indeed? Because the challenge is, this could just be another day. But what we are called to remember is that just like these people, just like the kids have told us the story, just like these people, we are these people that if we're not careful, we're praising God today for his word and what he did through our kids and then we get to Easter and we forget. We get busy with things that are going to 
be happening on Easter or we get tied up in other life circumstances. This is reminding us that we need to praise God, praise God each and every day as much as we can in everything we do. So it's taking a deep breath. And just like these kids did, I mean, they took some deep breaths today with all those lines they memorized. Put the Word of God in you. Allow it to work in and through you. Take the stories that they have told us today and take it with you everywhere you go. Because the things you say and the things you matter, the things you say and the things you do, they matter to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a place that we will all journey to one day as believers in Christ. If you haven't made that, I want you to continue to surrender space for God and see what God will do by the time we get to Easter. So we are preparing to launch from this place. And I just want to say one more time, kiddos, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, now it's just amazing what you've done. And to go with that, take that story with you everywhere you go. And worship team, thank you so much. I just appreciate you as well. Church, I appreciate you. All the technical stuff that went on behind, the practices, Gina, you know I appreciate you. And all of our technical people that did so much, thank you so much. Praise be to God. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We know that there was so much that you did to make this day even possible. Some of this started as long as seven, eight years ago in friendships, in relationships, in walking beside each other with our kiddos. Lord, that's what we want to be as the church. We are a church for every generation because we walk with each other's kids hand in hand through the struggles, through the hardships, through the things of life when life doesn't turn out like we thought it should. We're there for each other. We uphold each other and we care for each other and we pray for each other. And all that glory goes to you, God, because you began to move in people. And so you have more people to move in and through. I pray that this message would sink deeply into people's hearts. I pray that even as we leave here today, Lord, we are going to go over and we're going to have so much fun and pancakes and just having conversation with each other. So I ask you to bless our food. We know that we need strength. But what we need is we need friendships. Faith-based friendships that connect us, connect us to each other and connect us to you. So be with us this day, and all glory and praise goes to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So go from this place now. The pancakes await you, but know that our flippers are just a little bit ahead of you. So go patiently and allow those flippers to get in their place. But go with the grace of God in everything you do and say. Amen.